Over a year into the COVID-19 pandemic, billions of people have now been vaccinated. But with the spread of the Delta variant causing cases to rise, and the WHO investigating over 15 further variants around the world, this pandemic is far from over. Alok Jha and Natasha Loder are hosts of The Economist's podcast, The Jab. They've spent the last 18 months reporting on COVID-19, on the global vaccination race, and on the spread of new variants of the virus. How do you get variants? Every time a virus uh, replicates, you have the chance of a mutation happening. So the more it replicates, the more chances for mutation you have. And last year, COVID didn't seem to be doing anything for quite a long time. And then towards the end of the year, it started to take these really big jumps. They suddenly acquired like 20 or more mutations. And the question is, is how did this happen? And the suspicion, the strong suspicion is that the virus has spent some time inside the body of an immune suppressed person where the infection has lingered and many mutations have occurred within an individual person. So rather than this being something that happens as it spreads between people, that actually you're kind of brewing it up in one place. And you can see this happening in hospitals. It's not complete sort of speculation, but if you have a patient in hospital, so they're rece- receiving um, you know, some immunosuppressants and they have a COVID infection, you can watch in that person as the mutations accumulate and accumulate. This is evolution in action. This is natural selection in action. Um, we, we start to uh, get, get on top of the virus and the virus um, through random mutations finds ways around whatever mechanism we found to stop its spread. And ultimately, viruses don't want to be deadly as deadly as you think. They, they don't want, um, when I say want, they have no consciousness whatsoever. But but uh, if, if you forgive the anthropomorphism here, uh, they, they, don't, they don't want to necessarily kill their host quickly because they want to reproduce a lot and spread. If they killed the host quickly, then they don't spread. Um, and this is one reason why the original SARS-CoV didn't go as far around the world as um, as this SARS-CoV-2 has. Um, so, you know, the, the idea is that uh, even if it's more transmissible, it's definitely more dangerous because it just means more people get it. And therefore, ultimately, the statistics tell you there's more deaths. This is why we are concerned about variants and should keep on top of them. Could the virus mutate in a way to make vaccines ineffective? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, in theory, uh, they could. But as time goes on, we're finding that our vaccines are still protecting against hospitalisation, severe cases and deaths. We should start to feel a little bit more confident. And, um, you know, if you think about it, in 18 uh, months, you know, the kind of the worst um, variant that has come up has been that South African variant that seems to um, knock back vaccine efficacy quite a large chunk, whereas the other ones, um, the other variants do so, it seems uh, a lot less. And so as time goes on, we should feel more confident because, you know, we can start to sort of say, well, you know, maybe the virus doesn't have as many um, molecular tricks genetic tricks, if you like. But, you know, if something really troubling does emerge, you know, we can boost uh, with a variant vaccine. That, that's right. I mean, I think that right now the vaccines are beating the variants. Um, but the, on the on the flip side to all of that is that um, the variants are really, really raging through unvaccinated people. And most of the world is unvaccinated. The more times this uh, this virus can go into people and multiply and sicken more people, the more times it can mutate, the more, the more evasions it can have of different um, vaccines. And of course, I don't think that we're going to be in a situation where we're as vulnerable to the 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 virus as we were in March 2020 when there were no vaccines and no treatments and everyone had to sort of sit sit at home all the time. Um, but the longer we leave it, that we that the most of the world is not vaccinated, the more chances there are that there's going to be just another chink in each in specific vaccine's armor to the point where one or two of them may become less useful. The race to vaccinate the world is by no means over. And actually it's the thing, it's now logistics to make sure that we don't get to the point where the, um, the, the there's a variant, there's, there's like a, there's an omega variant that kind of um, rages through even vaccinated people. That will be the nightmare scenario. What do you think humankind will learn from this global disaster? How to make vaccines really quickly. Um, 
viral surveillance. I think we'll get really good at that. I think we'll learn to take tighter control of uh, lab security and animal food trends. I'm, uh, um, and how to unmute on Zoom. I think we have learned how to do that. I, there's something I hope we learn. I hope we learn to try and understand and predict where these sorts of threats uh, from from the natural world come from. Um, my my um, hunch is, despite all of the conspiracy theories out there, is still that this came from um, an animal uh, host, this virus. Oh, um, um, and uh, I don't think it's that controversial. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this, I, I think that's what happened. And, and this is going to increase as we encroach on habitats, as we um, uh, go into places where uh, we, we interact with animals more. I'm talking about humanity in general. Um, uh, if we're going to do that, which I think I think we should we should probably not do as much uh we need to understand what's out there and having surveillance of viruses out there um having surveillance of people in those situations uh to make sure they're looked after and the outbreaks don't spread very far that seems to be a no-brainer from all of this um scientists have been warning for decades that this sort of thing would happen and even in their wildest speculations they didn't think it would be as bad as this um uh, and so that so perhaps we should listen to those people a bit more I'm Natasha Lolo, the health policy editor of The Economist. You can read more of our coverage on COVID-19 by clicking on the link. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.